Handicapper Steve here, handicapping the racing from Parks Racing here on Saturday. It is the 21st of September, 2024. We're going to look at the stakes races on the program from Parks. But before I get on to that, remember to please follow me on Twitter at Horse Racing Kit 5 for more selections for race courses around the world, and I mean around the world. Remember to join me next week for my Woodward preview from aqueduct and also next week for my california crown preview from santa anita next weekend is one of the best weekends of racing in the fall so just join me for that and then you have keeneland right around the corner and also good racing at church next week keep forgetting about that good racing at church today also but uh, today's the premier day at parks you have the pennsylvania derby you have some you have the cotillion which is always a good race greenwood looks like it's going to be a good race so just in general good card here at, at parks we're not going to look we're going to look at the stakes races but not all the stakes races actually we're going to look at races 8 through 13, so uh, all those races can be packed in that um, time frame. So races 8 through 13 we're looking at right now. Let's get to it right now. We have a lot of races to look at. The 8th race from Parks, it is the Greenwood Cup. It's a great three event going for a $200,000 purse race for three-year-olds and upwards. We have a field of 10 horses staying the trip of ground of 2,400 meters or a mile and a half on the turf court, on the main track, excuse me. The final major marathon race now um, in the country this season, it looks like, unless uh, Churchill decides to card like a marathon race on dirt in the fall, that this is going to be it for those uh, dirt marathoners uh, because they got rid of the uh, British Cup uh, or whatever they call that race, the thoroughbred aftercare marathon. Um, it's a shame. And, you know, I like that race. But, um, you know, some years you you got five horses, some years you got, you know, 12 horses like in Keeneland two years ago that was a really good run but um, what, what can you do it's just uh, sometimes the races don't fill wouldn't surprise me in the next few years if they bring that race back as maybe um, you know a turf marathon because I've been seeing quite a few of those long distance races in the country uh, recently but um, my top selection here I'm going to try beat next I know it sounds crazy but I'm going to take the six horse truculent I'm going to go 6925 in the super factor 6925 super top selection six horse truculent the seven year old horse by Raisin Diat uh, Lindsay Schultz trans Hario Rondon gets some out. The horse's most recent out of game, an option 40 at Monmouth, mile 70 on the 24th of August, and the horse went by eight and a half lengths that day. He sat back early, he slowly moved his way up, he quickened up nicely, and at 12 to 1 with an 87 buyer, I thought that was a very good race. He, you know, I, I think coming here to the longer trip, he's bred for it through and through with the AP and D and Tisnow on the, um, damn side here today uh you know on the sire side i think here today he really you know stayed the trip well and i think he possibly could pick up some pieces late from the next who i think you know i think in this race you have some cheap horses running here and it wouldn't surprise me if some some of them try to go with him and, and you know challenge him he next hasn't seen a challenge and i think this is this might be his race where they're gonna try and go after him um but um also wide poster with that quick t run to the turn kind of scares me a little bit with him but he's also a, a faster horse <laughs> superior by the speed figures, but I think next could be uh, vulnerable in the spot. Two back at Delaware, miles 70 and off to 20. He finished second by three and a half lengths that day, and he was very wide, but he stayed the trip well. First off the bench, not a bad race that day, and then at Oakland, a mile three quarters in the mud, closing day in May in the uh, trail's end, a start lounge race. Finished second by a head. He stalked all the way around the race course from a wide post draw, but he just missed late, but he ran his heart out four and a half to one over the longer trip for the first time. And then at Oakland, a mile 16th in a start lounge race, finishing second by two and three quarter lengths. The winner was much the best, but he did gain some ground. He looks like the kind of horse that wants to run forever. 5-1. I'll give him a shot here. Like I said, no, they're not the nine horse next, but I, I do think they're, like I said, I think they're going to go after him here today. Um, you know, he's had everything his own way recently. Won at five cents of the dollar in the birds, known by 22. Won the Brooklyn, and probably his best race lifetime, and I was glad I was there to see this Brooklyn handicap on the 5th of July at Aqueduct over the mile three eights. Winning by nine and a quarter lengths, basically won in a drive easily that day. Won the Isaac Murphy. Won this race last year by 25 on a very sloppy going... <coughs> Excuse me. He's done everything right since coming to a longer trip, except his one race. He needed the race last year and Isaac Murphy off the bench. But um, coming here, I'll give him a shot. He's training well, but like I said, there are a lot cheaper horses in this race. And wouldn't surprise me if somebody tries to go with him early on. And, uh, you know, and let's see how far his speed goes. But it wouldn't surprise me if he wins by 10. But to recap my selection for the 8th from Parks, it's the Greenwood Cup. We're going to take a shot with the 6-horse truck. You can give kudos to the 9-horse next. 6-9-2-5 Super, 6-9 in the multi-race. 
the ninth race from Parks now. It's the Parks Dirt Mile. It's a, it's a, a listed race going for a $300,000 purse race for three-year-olds and upwards. Field of eight horses going 1,600 meters or a lap around the main track, which is a mile in circumference. Going to go take the five-horse Adaro. 5738 for me in the Superfecta. 5738 Super. Top selection five-horse Adaro. Four-year-old gun by American Pharaoh. John Service trains one. Ardono up in, is up in the saddle. The horse's most recent out again, the Mayor's Mile here on the um, 24th of August here at Parks over the mile. And he won by head. He only had three of the rivals that day, but he stalked a soft pace. He quickened up nicely, and he got the job done grinding it out to the wire. I thought that was a good effort. Coming here back to the home base, he running well, training well since the last race. I'm going to give him a shot to um, to win here today. He ran an optional 50 at Parks over the mile, 23rd of July, where he won by four and a quarter lengths. And he had a very wide trip that day, but he stalked. He got the lead, quickened up nicely. Very strong run for this horse with the 96 fire there. And then back at Parks, an allowance race, 59,000 back in June. He finished third by three lengths that day and he needed the race he just kind of hung a little bit late and then they ran him in the Westchester where he just wasn't getting going at, at uh, Aqueduct but he likes running the mile trip here um, at Parks he's run very well he has a forwardly pace I think he could win at 7-2 to two, I would use him I think the uh, 7 horse here Coastal Mission for uh, uh, Bondo Boca Chica win also and Jeff Franco coming in from Charlestown here most recently in the Charlestown Classic he wasn't catching Skippy Lawn Stocking who skipped home easily this horse just kind of plodded along he ran okay but he needed the, the, the better trip that day and the John Nairud at Aqueduct, seven frogs in July. He finished second by one quarter lengths from Milken, who was an next star winner. This horse was wide, but he was, you know, he was staying well that day, but he got beat by a decent horse. And the Salvatore Mile, like, Bright Future, came up the rail to win. This horse just was second best that day. He, he ran his heart out back around two turns. He doesn't run two turns very often, um, you know, but when he does, he runs these sneaky good races. Coming here to Parks for his, um, you know, freshman race over this course, I'll give him a shot on the ticket. But to recap my selection for the ninth from Parks now, it's the Parks Dirt Mile. Going to take the five horse Adaro. Give kudos to the seven horse Coastal Mission. Five, seven, three, eight, super. Five, seven in the multi race. The tenth event's now from Parks. It's the Turf Monster Stakes. It's a great three event going for a quarter of a million dollar purse race for three year olds and upwards. We have a field of 14 horses entered. 11, 12, 13 are. AEs 14R it is a MTO, so 10 will go a thousand meters of five frogs in the park's turf course that badly needs some refurbish refurbishment. Um, you know, every year it seems like this park's turf course towards the end of the season um, just needs you know some work into it. Um, hopefully, you know, maybe the next year or so they could uh, really do a, a good refurb of it. Because um, if I remember last year, I know they ran this race on that very sloppy turf course, uh, and it, it just looks so chewed up. And if I'm not mistaken, the year before where Carol. I think, did Caravelle win this race two years ago, three years ago? Um, I remember this this turf course also looking very eaten, eaten up. So, uh, you know, I think it needs some um, TLC into it. But uh, my top selection here, I'm going to go with the six-horse Oligon, 6 3 eight, ten in the Superfecta. 6 3 8 10 super top selection six horse oligon this sum if i were going by california chrome edward t allard trains gets rodriguez up in the saddle the horse is most recent out and came to the local prep for this one in the park's dash five frongs 24th of august and it was a success for this horse went by three quarters of length that day he stalked all the way around the race course from a very good post draw he quickened up nicely 95 buyer wasn't the fastest of his lifetime but he got the job done a very good race after all is said and done prior to that they took the horse to colonial five and a half on the inner turf course and opposite 75, where he finished fifth by two and three quarter lengths that day, and he was with them early on, saying some wicked fast fractions that he just couldn't keep up with late. They kind of, you know, melted home late, and he just wasn't getting there. It wasn't his day to win. And then the Jaipur at Saratoga, five and a half on the melon back in June, he finished ninth by eight lengths from Y poster. He's sent to get good position, but he just completely crumbled late. You know, it just wasn't his day to win there. And the loose of quality at Aqueduct over the six on the outer, he finished third by one and three quarter lengths, and I thought he ran decently. He was a little bit wide, but he stayed the trip well. Um, you know, if you look at his races last fall, he, you know, in the mid-Atlantic, even on the East um, East Coast, he was running half bad. Decent third at Aqueduct in the Turf Championship, um, Turf Sprint Championship back in the fall. You know, a decent fourth in the Belmont Turf Sprint on a very sloppy um, main track. And then a decent second last year's the Haas takes a Colonial. Refreshing here, 5-1. to one. I think he can win on the home base. The three-horse Super Quest, I think, went also for Jose Ortiz and Marcassi. Most recently, earlier in the month in the, in the Harvey Pack at Saratoga, five and a half in the Mellon. He finished third by three-quarters length where he had the lead. He got overtaken late by Big Invasion, who finally got back to his winning ways for Clement, but this horse, he ran a big race behind him that day. Prior to that, going five and a half in optional 80 at, um, 
Yeah, at Saratoga, he won by a nose, and when he wins, there's all ones on his running style because he he, he just wins on the run, and he's a you know he's a horse from the rail. He's probably gonna go to the lead, and they're gonna see how far the pace goes. And he did just that. He just held on to Saratoga, 97 bar, best of his life. I thought that was a good race. And then they get serious. And Mammoth over the five, he uh, finished second by one and a quarter lengths. He was on the front end, saying some wicked fast fractions. Had quite late, but again, he ran his heart out from uh, Y Poestra. He does his better running style from the inside. When he's drawn wide, I've noticed he doesn't get the best of trips, but he's drawn low today. He's training well. I'm going to give him a shot here at 5 2. And even the 8 horse Zen B for Christoph and Irad. I uh, was one or two back at Aqueduct going 6 and an option 6 2 on the 6th of July. Went in by two and a quarter lengths from a tracking trip. He was a little bit wide, but he came home clear late. Came back to run the select at Monmouth over the five and a half, where he finished third by head, just missing late. And there's going to be a horse gaining some ground. It could be him, since coming to the green stuff, he's really improved a lot. Let's give him zoom on the uh, pick four here. But to recap my selection for the 10th from Parks now, it is the grade three turf monster is going to take the six horse Alagon. Give kudos to the three horse Super Quest and the eight horse NB. Six, three, eight, ten Super. Six, three, eight in the multi-race. The 11th race now from Parks. It is the Gallant Bob Stakes. It's a grade two event going for a $400,000 purse race for three-year-olds here. Field of eight horses going 1,200 meters or six furlongs here in the Gallant Bob. I'm going to take the one horse bon, uh, Ben Tronato as a top selection. Excuse me, can't speak. I'm going to go 1325 in the Superfecta. 1325 Super. Top selection one horse Ben Tronato. Three year old by Valiant Minister. Jose D'Angelo trains. Ira Tease Jr. gets the mount. The horse's most recent out came the Robert Hilton Memorial of Charlestown. Seven furlongs, 23rd of August. First off, the long refreshing. He finished second by one three quarter lengths that day and he was full. Flying on the front and seeing some good fractions around the bull ring. He just missed late. He got overtaken, but he didn't go out down without a fight. I thought he ran his heart out first off the bench. Coming back to a standard six furlong one turn race against these horses, I think he has enough speed to really run a good race here today. This race could be named, um, you know, a Florida bred stakes race because it seems like half these horses are Florida breds. Let's see how many Florida breds we have here. One, two, three, um, four, five of these um, eight horses are Florida bred, so you don't see that very uh, or often up in the north. Uh, but um, two back, he ran in the Saudi Derby at King Abdulaziz in Saudi Arabia, one mile on the dirt, 24th of February. He finished third by six lengths that day, and he was with him early on. He had the lead. He got overtaken by Forever Young and Late, who was next out winner. And Bookham Dana was next out winner also in the uh, in the um, Woody Stevens. But this horse, he ran his heart out that day. Just maybe the mile was a little bit too long for him. And the um, Florida Stallion Series and, and Reality Series at Goldstream, mile 16, second December. He finished third by length, and he just stalked, and he just couldn't get there late. Like I said, I just do think the two turns was getting to him but before then the in the florida stallions affirmed that with the seven back in october winning by two and three quarter lengths from a wide trip he really drove home clear late and then the dr fager division he won quite quite easily drawn well here today he's training well i think he's a very very likely winner um i, I would single him in the pick four that begins with this race but i also think you could use the three horse burchino Br for alfredo velasquez and jose Lascano. was a winner here on um in the prep race for this race going six and a half in august quite easily by six and a half lengths on the front end 93 bar he ran a career best race that day prior to the jersey shore behind bookham dano he finished third by five and three quarter lengths where he's just wide never getting into it and then the gold fever he probably needed the race he just kind of went a little bit too fast in the front end he has some hidden ability here today training well on the home on the turf on the home turf i'm gonna give him a shot here uh, on the ticket but to recap my selection for the lot of the now from parks it's the gray two big gallon bob gonna take the one horse brett Renato. give kudos to the three horse brett chino uh one three two five super like i said if you single the one horse i totally understand I'm, if i play two tickets i'll probably single the one ticket but i would go one three also in the uh, pick five here pick four whatever you decide to play let's get to the co-future 12th race now from parks which is the cotillion stick it's a grade one event going for a million dollar purse race for three-year-old fillies field of eight horses going 1700 meters or mile 16th here in the cotillion i'm going to go take the number six horse torpedo anna 6135 for me in the superfecta 6135 super top select six horse torpedo anna this three over the by fast anna kenneth mcpeak trains brian hernandez jr gets the match if there's a horse right now that would get my vote for Horse of the Year, it would be her. She ran a terrific race in defeat behind Fierceness in the... Um and the um, driver of Saratoga over the mile quarter. She finished second by a head. She just missed late. She, you know, she ran her heart on the front and she was gaining some ground. Not a bad race in defeat, you know. Um, prior to that, in the coaching club at, at uh, Saratoga over the mile and eighth, she was facing not the world's 
you know, deepest group, but she won by four and a quarter lengths in the Tron. Very good race. And then the Acorn winning by five and a quarter lengths from a stupidly wide post dress. She really ran terrifically, even after losing a shoe. And then in the uh, Kentucky Oaks, setting to the front end, something, you know, the source wasn't used to. Um, she, she really won in, in style that day. She's really improved a lot uh, since um, earlier in the year. She, she's, you know, she had a wide post in the fantasy where she overcame, overcame a, you know, a, a good trip, <laughs> you know, overcame a, a dream trip in the, in the Oaks to win, and then in the uh, Acorn, she she went going away from a stupidly wide poster. She's done everything right. She's training well. You know, four to five, she could win. If there's a horse that could slightly upset, I think it'd be the one horse power squeeze for Jorge Delgado and Irad. Um, you know, what the uh, Alabama gaining a lot of ground stupidly while late just, just, you know, got there in nick of time. That was a very impressive performance. Prior to the Del Oaks at Delaware over the mile 16, she won by a nose that day. And again, when she wants to win, she's won by a lot, but she just gained a lot of ground that day. Even the race, like the, um, the Acorn, she gained a little bit of ground. She wasn't going to win, but she, she was, you know, from where she was early, she, she really ran terrifically. She's a bit of a deep closer. This track can play towards wide, deeping, deep closers. I'll give her a shot here, a four to five, a four to one on the ticket. But Torpedo Anna is a very likely winner, and like I said, gonna probably if you know if she wins today, um, you know I, I, I would give her a shot for the. Um, uh, for horse of the year, because um, who else has really run terrific races this year? I think she, you know, I, I keep going back to her. She's been basically the best, I think. But um, it's three really my selection for the twelfth now from Parks. It's the Grade One Million Dollar Cotillion. Going to take the one horse Torpedo and I give kudos to the one horse Power Squeeze. Six one three five Super Six One in the multi race. The thirteenth race now from Parks to featured on the program. It is the Pennsylvania Derby. It's a Grade One event going for a million dollar purse race for three year olds here. Field of eleven horses going eighteen hundred meters. Are on the eighth here in the Pennsylvania Derby. This race, um, in, in the last 20 years, this race has really become, you know, maybe even the last 15 years, it's become like the premier, you know, final three-year-old stakes race for the um, for, for these um, Derby ho- hopefuls or for the Derby trail horses. Um, years ago, it used to be the Super Derby, and the Super Derby kind of went backwards. The Pennsylvania Derby kind of took its, um, its place on the spot, and uh, you know, you've seen some great races, great horses run here at Parks in this race in the last 10 years or so. Uh, um, with that being said, I think it's a good race here this year. Not as good as years past, but still a good race. I'm going to go with the four-horse timeout as top selection. Four, seven, eleven, eight for me in the Super Facta. Four, seven, eleven, eight Super. Top selection of four-horse timeout. This three-year-old call by Curlin. Bill Montrain, Joel Rosario picks up the mount. The horse's most recent out again, 17th of August, Saratoga. A mile and eighth in the lounge race for 110,000. Facing all the horses. He finished second by a half a length that day. He had very wide trip that day. Drawn 7 7 which is not ideal with that quick run to the first turn at Saratoga, nine furlongs, but um, he was wide throughout, but he was gaining that day. I thought he ran a terrific race with the 91 buyer. He's, you know, consistently run some decent buyers as of recently, which in high to mid 90s, um, you know, low to, to mid 90s, shall I say, uh, which I think could definitely win against these horses. You know, he's stepping up in class. Shouldn't be a problem. I think he's sitting on that very good run. He ran against stakes quality horses in the Curlin at um, Saratoga, Mon Lathan, on the 19th of July, where he finished third by four lengths by end match Wisdom. He's running back this one today. Didn't really run uh, at all in the uh, Travers after that. But this horse, he kind of stalked him. He gained a little bit late, but I thought he wanted more ground. Also, he ran a little bit too slow to that uh, three quarters, which cost him there. And then in the main special way to Aqueduct, Mon Lathan, 15th of June. Went by a neck that day. Closing up from mid-pack. He was a little bit wide, but he gained it out to the wire. A very good performance. Performance. Even Derby Weekend at Church over the mile in the main special weight, finishing third by one quarter length. He was stupidly wide, but he was, you know, picking up some pieces late. Coming here, training well at Saratoga since the last race. I'm going to give him a shot here on the ticket. I think the seven horse Dragon Guard is a horse that's going under the radar for Florent Giroux and Brad Cox. He's done everything right so far this year. He won the West Virginia Derby at Mountain Year over the mile and eighth on the front end quite easily. Prior to the Indiana Derby at Indiana over the mile sixteenth, won by two and a quarter lengths. Wide trip from the uh, wide trip to begin with, but then saved a lot of ground to go away with it. That was an impressive race. And then optional hundred at Churchill on the slop over the mile, won by three and a quarter lengths. He had everything his own way, and he won quite easily. Biggest question with him is when he's put on these big shows, he's had everything his own way on the front end. He's probably going to get some pace pressure here today, but he has gained, you know, run a good race where he hasn't been on the lead. He was stalking in his uh, seasonal reappearance at Keelan over the seven furlongs or the bounce seven furlongs in that main special weight. Winning by three and three quarter lengths. He took off clear late. That was an 88 bar, and that I thought that was a very good race. Trading well since the last race. I'll give him a shot 9-5, but he's going to get some pace pressure here today. 
the, and I think the eleven horse stronghold for Antonio Frazou and Phil Diamantico and also he had a decent place in the Indiana Derby. We had a very troubled trip that day. Um, you know, his Derby before that Churchill, he just was wine, just never getting into it. But you know, he had a very good race and good season on the West Coast. To begin off the season, very nice Sunland Derby, very nice Antonita Derby. He looks like he could be a bit of a grinder here. He's trying well to weld Antonita. I'll give him a shot here at five two, but I do think the other two are more likely winners here. But to recap my selection now for the thirteenth from Parks, it's the Grade One million dollar Pennsylvania Derby gonna take the four horse timeout give kudos to the seven horse dragon guard and the 11 horse stronghold four seven eleven eight super four seven eleven in the multi race so good luck to all and please follow me on Twitter at horse racing kid five good luck everybody